Hi, this is Jay Lee. Hope all is well. I just wanted to show you a few things that we saw at our UFO sighting event on September 24th, 2017. We saw close to 40 objects this day. There had to have been at least 10 after 5.30, of course, while I was wrapping up. If there was a theme of the day, it had to have been sightings at our zenith. The zenith is the point directly above the observer. We call them neck breakers. Why people are looking straight up in the sky is beyond me. Objects are very difficult to capture anyway, but very difficult at the zenith. I want to thank Fausto Perez for hosting this event. He did a fantastic job as usual. He's definitely one of the powerhouses in the UFO communication community. I also want to thank Robert Bingham for coming to this event. He's the man known as the Summoner and one of the main drivers of UFO field research. As usual, we had a fantastic time together. Chris Wilson was there, John Graff, Jesse Contreras, Charles Casey, and many other amazing researchers. Many of the regulars, I think, are like me in that they already know the truth about UFOs. We just can't wait to see more. I also think that there's something magical about watching people seeing them for the very first time. I agree that seeing 40 objects in one sitting is counterintuitive, and I know that it's statistically improbable, but when we call, they come to our location. And not only do we see stuff, we see weird stuff. I'm not sure about anyone else, but when I call, I ask them to show me something that will differentiate themselves from regular aerial debris. Just give me a hint that will show me it's them. I also ask them to teach me something that I can teach others. Just as a leaf that will show legs, like a grasshopper, give me indications of camouflage. Give me a shred of evidence of abnormality. So my point with this first one, that it was here when I arrived. I usually show up about a half hour before an event, about 10.30. So there was only a couple of us that actually saw this. I captured this one with my Panasonic V520. What you're looking at is about a mile away at 80 times zoom. But something that I notice, it's not totally uncommon anymore for us to see things immediately when we arrive. They seem to be waiting for us. This is a phenomenon that I usually see at Robert Bingham's summoning events. To me, it's a good sign for an action-packed day. Personally, I think what you're looking at is an anomaly or some sort of mimic drone. I've captured numerous of these bags at our events. You just don't see this every day. For those who think that we launch these things into the air, even if it was a bag, how would we go about doing this? How would you do this? This was about 10.30 in the morning. Do you really think that we bring fans and hair dryers to blow these things up in the sky to keep these things afloat? To see something like this traversing the sky, much less videotaping it on a day, place, and time of our UFO sighting event is not an accident. It's statistically improbable for this to be a coincidence. To even suggest coincidence no longer makes sense. Here's another one of my favorites of the day. This one draws your attention to itself and we start videotaping. This is what I call a leader. Now, although I haven't been able to find a theme on the internet of this leader, it seemed to be nodding back and forth in order to catch our attention. So I'm videotaping this and a flyby shoots by at a high rate of speed. When I got home, I was able to measure the speed of the flyby. It was traveling at 117 feet per second or 80 miles an hour. I just want to remind people that there was no tornado or hurricane this day in Southern California. So this next one is a live, fast-moving orb that came out of nowhere and that was heading in the opposite direction of the breeze. It's, it's, it's moving fast. fast. Yes, it's moving fast. I don't know. Dude, it's an orb. Okay, here we go. It's an orb. Okay, there it is. So for this next one, I wanted you to see through my eyes. I just want to show you a couple of things to look out for. Tethers on balloons are typically 3 16th of an inch wide. The actual tether tag is usually about an inch wide. If a balloon is 12 inches in diameter, you should be able to put 64 tethers side by wide in order to duplicate the width of the balloon. That's number one. Number two, I want you to recognize what the typical tether looks like when it floats in the air. Notice how it sways, drifts, and flutters in the breeze, but also notice what it doesn't do. It's not acting rigid or taut. Now let's take a look at the footage. This one was captured by the telescope. I'm hoping you guys acknowledge and recognize what you are watching is not characteristic of typical balloons. I'm hoping that you do not deny the facts that are shown to you in this video. 
Please keep in mind that not only do we bring our cameras and video cameras to the event we scheduled a month earlier, we ask them to come to our location and show us something unique. The stuff you're watching in this video is highly improbable. When I communicate, I ask them to teach me something so that I can teach you. So here it is. I want to thank you for watching. Please join LA UFO channel on meetup.com and join us for our next UFO sighting event and see orbs and flybys with your own eyes. We always have a great time together and I want you to meet and greet some of the best UFO communicators in the world. So I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.